Hey, it's Ed. Today I would like to show you an example of a technique that I came up with to export uh, some percussion, a percussion track into uh, a MIDI file, which I could then play through a drum machine. So I'm going to show you a few apps during this video that I used together to get that done. Uh, now there's many ways to do this, and this is certainly not likely to be the best, but it is one way, and I think it works pretty well. So let me show you what I did. So first thing, um, I'm gonna use the example, I've got this Drum Jam app open here, and um, there's a lot of really nice rhythm patterns in here. However, um, these are audio recordings only. The patterns that are included are audio only. You cannot export MIDI from this app. Uh, it does support MIDI export from these pads down here, but that, that doesn't include the built-in patterns, which is where all the fun stuff is at. So what I wanted to do is get this real nice pattern that I've got selected here that I want to use for a project and try to get into a MIDI file so I could play with it a little bit and also analyze the rhythm. So let me jump right in. So first of all, uh, in this main screen here, there's a lot of stuff going on, but let me direct you to the mute solo section here. Now, if I hit play on the upper right, it's gonna play the whole thing. Let me kick that off, it takes a second. All right, now that's a lot of stuff going on, and uh, I, might, I might end up exporting all four of these uh, sequences, but just for this demo, I'm gonna show you what I did first. So if I click over here on the upper right, uh, it's gonna solo out this instrument. Uh, Brekety, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, uh, is what it looks like. And um, I'll show you what I did with that. So what I did is, uh, now if I hit play, now you hear that instrument soloed out. Now what I did is, uh, if you hit this record button right here, it's going to record whatever's playing. There it goes. Now I'm gonna hit stop on that. Now. Here, uh, these, these are options in Drum Jam that you're gonna get when you make a recording. I'm not gonna go into all that. I'm just gonna skip that. I'm just gonna say abort, uh, delete that recording because I've already got one from earlier. So I'm gonna skip over a lot of the details because of the length of this video. I wanna keep it as short and tight as possible. Uh, if you have questions on anything specific, let me know in the comments. So now if I go into Manage Files in the settings here, I've got a file right here that I recorded earlier. If I tap on that, I can play it. You can hear it right there. And you can um, export this thing out and you can copy right to the files app or share it, um, audio share it, whatever you like. Lots of options there. So let me jump back. So what I've done, so to jump ahead, what I did is I pulled up Neon Audio Editor and uh, I got it into Neon. I basically did a, uh, a copy and paste into Neon, which sent it to the exported files area right down here. And that's the file right there. And uh, very convenient, by the way, to do that, very quick. And then I um, loaded it up. And uh, after that, let me get rid of that. Uh, it, I went into um, the threshold section down here. I went into Slice, I tapped on Slice here on the left, clicked on Threshold, and I took the defaults. Um, it automatically sliced this up based on the transients, and it did a perfect job without any adjustments. Now I'm ready to um, take this and, and pull out the, um, the MIDI information. So if you click on Manual over here, you'll notice on the right, we now have Export Slices, which I'm not going to use right now, uh, and you have a MIDI button. Now, if you click that MIDI button, as you can see, it says it, it's, uh, it says it fast. Now, it copies the MIDI uh, timings to the clipboard, and I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, I've got a copy of AUM over here running. I've already jumped ahead a bit here. Um, now, if I look in the Helium here, um, I'm not gonna copy it in. Now, I could go here, and I could just uh, paste those MIDI notes straight in. Uh, I'm gonna jump over here to, um, what I've already pulled in. I actually exported the MIDI file out and I, I can pull it in. Uh, you could do it this way too. Um, either way, you can paste it or you can get import in a file. So here it is. Now, this is the timing. Now it's been quantized to, to 16ths. 
Um, you could quantize it uh, a little tighter, but I, I, I don't know how that's going to work because um, the drum application I'm going to be using is, is only uh, going to work at 16th note level and above. So I'm going to hope for the best here, and uh, hopefully that quantized pretty nicely. So we'll see. So that's what it looks like. Now you'll notice, though, it's starting at C minus 1 and going all the way up to, you know, like C2 or something like that in this particular sequence. Uh, it's an 8-bar um, sequence. Now you got to make sure that your tempo, you might want to have it set. It's not going to matter for the MIDI portion, but you might want to have it set so that when you play it back, uh, from the application, your drum application inside AUM, if you're going to do this kind of a setup, uh, then you can do a side-by-side -side comparison with the original at the same speed and see if uh, the um, interpretation is, is accurate, if those timings are correct. So we're going to leave it at 120 because that was the original source. I've got here, I've got loaded a copy of Digistix over here, and uh, I've got a copy here of a new app that I just picked up uh, from Ryuda Kira called KQ MIDI Modulate. I have links in the description for this. And what I've done here is I've added an entry. There's a section called Convert in this app. It's a, it's a MIDI module. Uh, and what I've added over here, you might be able to use an existing section right here. I've got uh, a conversion from velocity to key. Now what that does is it's gonna take um, any incoming MIDI look at the velocity and it's going to convert it to a um, MIDI note. Key actually means MIDI note. It's going to convert it to a MIDI note value. So if we were to um, do that um, and play this, let me open up a working copy of the file for you here, one that's all set up. All right, so in Helium down here. Now what you'll see here in this MIDI monitor, I'm actually taking the output from the MIDI um, MIDI Modulate app, and um, I'm just feeding it over here so I can see what's going on. And if you look over here, you'll see um, a note on, note off, note on, note off. There's one little one little misfire here at the beginning, but as you can see, note on, note off, it's all note 76. And uh, so basically, it's taking these notes and uh, shifting them according to velocity. And if we open this here real quick, you'll see the, um, on here, this is the velocity measurement and it's a equivalent on all these. Basically, they're all at 100, I believe. So what that's gonna allow me to do is, um, it's going to take that input and convert it from all these notes into a single note um, at a single velocity. So it's gonna end up being, looks like note 76 right here. And I just sort of randomly chose that just so I could, you know, have something that was reasonable. Um, now, what I've got is I've got basically a MIDI trigger that's going to trigger on note 76 with these correct timings, or at least semi-correct, right? As close as we can get with 16th note resolution. And then I'm going to go over to Digistix. And um, again, I'm going to cut ahead here. What I did is I set up a pattern of 32 beats. Um, because um, it actually does take um, eight measures to complete this, this pattern. It's, a, it's an eight measure pattern. So technically it's an eight four time. And um, what I did in, in Helium is I clicked record here, clicked the transport and recorded it straight in. Now I've made a slight adjustment here. Um, let me bump this up. Probably should look more like that or something like that. So this was how it would look. So this is page one. Uh, or sorry, that's page two, here's page one. Um, you can see if you have a pattern length of more than the width, you have to shift them up here. You can see here, here's one through 16 uh, beats, uh, here's 17 through 32 beats. So you can see the pattern is is definitely different between those two. So it's definitely a, a eight bar uh, 32 beat pattern there. And so basically what I did is I, I just used AUM and uh, I used Helium to uh, play into Digistix. And if you look over here on the routing in AUM, you'll see I've got uh, the Helium output going to the KQ MIDI modulate. And then from the KQ MIDI modulate, which is converting them all into one single note, 
going to digistics. Now, I should take one step back now to just explain what I did here. Now, you'll see it's all recorded on alt kick. So what I did to prepare for that is you can, um, you can select your, your drum that you wanna uh, record the sequence into from the MIDI input. And you click these little arrows up here. It's got pad samples, pad effects, layer velocities, pad options, layer tuning. MIDI mapping right here. Now you can um, you can manually do this up down, uh, or you can do a MIDI learn. And when you when you play the transport, um, it's automatically going to learn that MIDI note that's coming in that that you selected, which is note seventy six or that I selected, and um, automatically assign it. So you can use these arrow keys to choose the MIDI note that will go to that alt alt kick, or you can choose other ones. So you you want to be careful though to um, choose a MIDI note that's not already in use. Like over here, I've got, uh, let's see, here we go. Rim shot, low tom. These are like in the 50s, uh, 40s, 50s. So choose one that's out of the range so you're not inadvertently recording into one of these other. I guess I got lucky when I did. I chose a high enough number. So choose a high enough MIDI note um, in your uh, back here, just to go back here. Choose a high enough number here in your, in your MIDI modulate so that uh, you're getting something that isn't going to be confusing uh, to Jigistix. And um, so basically that's it. So let me show you um, this. If I just play it through the app, that's what it sounds like. Everything's been moved over to Digistix. Uh, this part is done because I've now recorded into Digistix, and this all can be uh, left for another import session or recording session. Um, now Digistix would completely operate on its own. I could load it up all by itself with this pattern and be good to go. So let me play it for you. And you can listen to how it sounds. So maybe not exactly the same as the original. Uh, I'll play back a little of the recording here for you. So maybe not perfect, but uh, you know, quite, quite, quite usable, and certainly gives you an insight into the the sort of um, patterns that are actually inside that that audio percussion that you started with. So to me, I think it's it's quite useful in a, in a pretty quick and easy way uh, to pull this out and get it into a, a MIDI file and into a, a MIDI drum app. So there you go. Thanks for watching.